So the main uh, title work, the one that was on the poster, uh, Allegri Miserere, um, a very famous piece, of course. And what I think is uh, particularly interesting about this piece is that, as we've talked about, and John Rutter talks extensively in the in the uh, in the uh, introduction to the in the commentary to the uh, European Sacred Music book, is that this uh, the version that's been handed down to us is very much um, what's become. Uh, had become working practice in the papal chapel um, in Rome, where um, Allegri worked. So this um, Allegri and Palestrina both spent the majority of their working lives in Rome um, with all the kind of authority that that city had um, as the centre of the Catholic Church. And um, the, the the original version of the Allegri I've actually put as a PDF below. You might be interested to look at. It's rather simple. Um, there's none of the high um, solo, the things that we were doing as solo uh, sections. None of that. It's rather simple, straightforward, uh, even simpler on the opening opening sections as well. And the plain songs uh, sung probably uh, as they might have been uh, originally intended on a single note. So all rather plain and lots and lots of verses. Um, however, there's a really interesting insight here into the difference between the music that's been written down and left to us as an kind of what you might call an authentic version versus what actually went on. So this this piece, and obviously it's become, um, it became something of a of a feature, um, was and and there's a kind of legend involved. So the piece was involved to be sung in Holy Week and um, it became rather famous in terms of the performance. The, the addition, uh, the music was, it was forbidden um, on pain of excommunication to be performed, uh, for the music to be copied and taken elsewhere, although it was eventually, um, of course, uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, actually an English his music historian who eventually uh, pinched it first about a hundred years after it was um, written in the uh, in the second half of the 18th century. So this was written and performed every year from about 1666 um, and it became this tradition and and people would come from far and wide to hear this um, amazing performance um, which would have included probably these uh, cadenzas, the kind of um, high interpolation with these virtuosic extraordinary um, High top C's that we've come to know, and which are the kind of let's be let's face it and be honest, uh, that's the kind of main thing that people enjoy about this piece uh, nowadays, and why it's so famous. This stratospheric, um, heavenly uh, depiction of the of this uh, text. Um, so do have a look at the two two combined. I found a very nice recording by Clare College Cambridge that you can sing along with. I've transferred the John Rutter. Uh, version that we're used to into a PDF. So you can sing along with this. I, I've added the cut I've not put in, so you can, um, you'll see the complete version. Um, it's a very nice recording by Clare College Cambridge. Um, rather um, old fashioned video techniques and the solo, soloists make me a bit nervous because they look like they're going to fall off with only kind of tiny piece of string to, st to save them if they, if they were to do so. But it's a beautiful piece and really one to kind of get you in the mood. Um, something to listen to um, late at night, perhaps. Um, it's, it's just uh, an extraordinary and unique piece.